Kayla had explained you earlier that uh, like bulk carriers have ductiles, the big bulk carriers. Why? Because we pass through pipelines through that and it is very convenient thing for ships to have. And ductile is a part of double bottom. Now again no mixing up what is double bottom and what is double bottom tank. When you seal double bottoms properly to create compartments, seal means properly closed by welding and all, then they become tanks. Otherwise, there is one bottom, there is a second bottom. And that is made. But now the whole thing will be port side to starboard side, a huge thing. Instead of that, maybe we put some vertical partitions and divide it into tanks. Ships used to have port double bottom tank, center double bottom tank, starboard double bottom tank. Then, ductile idea came. So, they took some spacing out of these double bottom tanks and created a tunnel that is ductile to pass pipelines, electric cables, etc., etc., hydraulic systems. So that the total weight of the ship decreased. Now, if you are going to have a confined a tunnel. How do you expect to walk in it? Means how do you expect to go from one end to other end? Because there will be obstacles of frames everywhere. So are you going to climb up like a stipple chase or something? No. So we have rails. On the rails, we have got a trolley. You sit on that. There is a rope. You pull. There is also brake because if ship is trimmed and all, you will have difficulty in using trolley. It will start running in one direction on its own. So we have got all that mechanism of braking and all. You sit there, pull and you go to required part where you have got some issue. Issue will be probably 90% of the time. The some valve is not working. The remote controlled hydraulic valves. They are not working, so you go there. Or if you are going in for inspection because you found water in ductile. Water means there is a leak. So you are investigating where the leak has come and how to fix it. So that is another time you will go. Ductile takes you from engine room to the forward collision bulkhead. But it doesn't penetrate the forward collision bulkhead. It just takes you up to there and then you come out straight by vertical ladder on the main deck. Engine room, you go to the bottom of the engine room, then there is a special opening which has to be opened up. Duck keel also has got independent ventilation system so that you ensure that uh, there is sufficient oxygen, no toxic gases etc. when you go in duck keel. Now, you are going to go in so you also need light. So there is a lighting system also. You switch on the light. You can see things inside. Of course you will not see like bright like uh, what you see in daylight. But it has got enough lighting. Now the rule of lighting since we are talking about lights. Rule of uh, brightness of light is simple on ships. You should be able to read newspaper in that light. A person with a normal vision should be able to read newspaper in that light, in that illumination. That is a rule. One simple rule. This is how the minimum intensity of the light must be. Okay. So, first you go, will go through ductile to give you an idea what it is. You watch for the frames there, pipelines and all and that guy is giving commentary. I think he is one of the junior officers who has made this. Then we have got something about ballast tanks. So you will get an idea how big are they. Like uh, yesterday I did mention probably in division 2. Not uh, you only. That when you are inside a hold, you are looking at a hollow building which may be like a 6, 7 story building on each floor you are having at least six apartments. That sort of a volume you are looking at. Now, ballast tanks also in proportionate amounts are big. You know, means ballast tank is easily bigger than most of the houses. 
depending on of course what balance tank it is and all, but they can be that big. Normal balance tanks you can stand without any problems because that sort of a volume is there and dimensions are there. Then there is one view inside double bottom tank. Now ballast tank is a ballast tank. Double bottom is a subset of ballast tank. So that is what you will see. And the last one is hold bilges where they are cleaning the hold bilges. Okay, one by one we will start now. And I hope now most of the people are in. Hopefully. Today we are going to the duck hill. The keel is at the very bottom and center line of the ship. It is a steel structure that supports the framework of the ship. So now that we know what a keel is, the duct keel is a tunnel that runs along the keel. This tunnel is designed for people to pass through it, doing things such as inspection on pipings or alarm gauges. So today we are going into the duct keel. First, as always, we have to put on some safety gear. To get into the duct kill, we must go through the engine room to the bottom floor, then through a manhole. Climbing down two stairs of ladders, we're now inside the duct. See, he's pulling on the trolley. To get across the entire length, we use a pulley cart system with wheels and a rope to pull ourselves over. Along the way, we do a visual inspection, checking the structure for any cracks or rust. To our right, we can see the ballast lines, fuel lines, and other pipelines. The fuel line is the huge pipe of insulation to reduce the heat transfer. The other big one is the ballast line for transferring seawater between tanks. In between the pipings are the expansion joints or flexible couplings. Their purpose is to coop with the ship's flexing when under heavy seas. We have arrived at the fore end. Here we test the bilge water alarm system by pushing this knob with my boots. Finished inspecting here, now we're going back to the accommodation. Some interesting facts. Laying down the keel is the first step of ship building. Everything else is assembled afterwards. So when the keel is broken, the ship is commonly said to have broken its back.
as always, thanks for watching. Thumbs if you liked it, subs if you loved it. Comment if you got any questions. Stay tuned for more content, and I'll see you next week. Okay, so you got now some idea what is duck keel. Okay. Now ballast tanks. Similar, all these videos are going to show internal structures. So it is not going to be something like uh, trees and uh, birds flying. Heat reflection coatings bana plus so gold water tank data hai. Tapti garmi mein bhi thande paani ki guarantee. Okay, first vlog, let's do something interesting. Today the deck crew are going into the fresh water tank to do some inspection and cleaning. I'm gonna join them and while at it, gonna try and take some shots. So let's go change into some safety gear. To get to the fresh water tank, we have to go through the engine room. This is manual, okay? As you can see, the water tanks are structurally reinforced and strengthened into compartments. So climbing around is actually quite difficult. I also have to be extra careful since it is wet and slippery. We check for any cracks or damages and also check for if anything such as small organisms that are growing. Here we see the deck crew washing the tank. Finishing inspecting the water tank. Going for dinner now. Today is Sunday, so we have a pretty special Western dinner. After dinner, I'll have to go up to the bridge for 8 to 12 navigation watch. If you enjoyed watching my vlog and would like more, please like, share, and subscribe. I'll post up a vlog at least once per week. Thanks for watching. Okay, you saw that uh, you know oblong thing like through which they went down. That is called manual, manual cover, and it has got bolts all over now double bottom tank okay like double bottom tank is a subset of ballast tank
Sounds very adventurous type, no? Searching for a ghost. No, we ensure that before you enter the tank, we check it out that there is enough oxygen and plus ventilation is on, so you cannot be short of oxygen. Just see the framing, how the framing is, never mind, you just understand there is framing like this. That is how the ships become strong. And these framings you don't see outside. Okay, that framing, this is what I wanted to point you out, that double bottom tanks. I got lots of framings and this is what generally outsiders don't see it. You can always see it again, no? It is always available to all of you. I am giving you more guided videos that in case there are any issues. But uh, you can see it on your own, okay? And breathing problems don't come there because... Uh, we ensure before going in a double bottom tank or any tank, there is a full procedure, uh, entry into enclosed compartment, there is a full procedure, safety procedure. After that, only permission will be granted to go inside. And what is the major difference between like ballast tanks and duck keels? Is duck keel is designed to be dry. It is designed to be dry. So, they have got proper lighting system, proper ventilation system with the blowers and all. So it is just like one of the comp dry compartments. Whereas ballast tanks are designed to be wet, means they're designed to take the ballast. So they don't have these fixed ventilation systems. They don't have lights inside. And that is why we have to carry the torches. And so it is little more difficult in ballast tanks that you use torch and you inspect. Believe me, one gets used to it. And anybody with claustrophobia or something uh, generally doesn't work on ships. <clears throat> because I have not seen a single person with claustrophobia on board ships. Because as it is, your cabin is closed. You have got a porthole. Fine. But it is closed. So, anybody who has to live in that AC air-conditioned place has to be normal. Now, we are coming to hold bilges. Okay, hold bilges, like I explained you, it's a bucket sort of thing which is cut into double bottom tank and that, uh, all the liquids which are gathering in the hold because of leakages or any other reason, uh, condensation, it drains into bilges, bilge wells. They are bilge wells. And from there, there is a connection to pump it out. This is a bulk carrier. You see the size of it. Okay, now this guy is inside and he is cleaning it.
So see the size is big. Little, uh, what I will say, one of those jobs where you don't have so much of space available. It's like irritating time of stuff, you know. But you always sir. have some people with flexible bodies. Sir. Huh? Sir, these things officers also have to do. Man. As a cadet, you will be doing it. Oh. Oh, As a cadet, you will be doing it. Tatlo. Okay. And After then the you don't. Then you go there only inspect. Two. Then you are uh, okay. officer. Three. Officers have got other work, no? As a cadet is part of training. Because when you Sir, become boss, this? you must understand the difficulties people are uh, facing. Sir, what is this, sir? Yes, sir. Sir, it looks like cement. It has to be dry. That is the reason we are using sponge. These are bilge wells. That guy is inside the bilge well. No, but sir, what is that material he is cleaning? Huh? Oh, sir, the thing which he is cleaning, sir, what is that? What he is doing is, he is cleaning up what is lying there and the water and that is the reason. One. Hello. ठीक है Okay, again I come back. See what happens is when you do washing of the hold, water will be pumped out. Okay, when you wash the hold, when you wash the hold, water will be there and that water has to be pumped out because it has to be removed from the hold. Now you want a dry hold for loading. So that water goes in bilges. And you keep on pumping out bilges. But as usual, the absolutely the last part which cannot get pumped out for you can say technical uh, issues, that has to be done manually. Now, we also use the small pumps, you know, portable pumps, which we put there, dry. But in the end, it has to be dry. It has to be dry, clean and dry. So somebody has to go inside and... Clean it up. That is what generally crew will do. As a cadet, you will get experience because I am quite sure a good chief officer will make sure that you at least do it for one hour, two hours so that you are well aware of what are the difficulties. See, all the work you do, all the work you do is to gain experience. Cadets are not required on the ships. Okay? Get it right. Cadets are not required on the ship. In any good company, cadets are investment. Cadets are not cheap labor in good companies. So, you must experience this so you understand what is the job like. So, when you are the boss, you can think much better in planning. And it is just question of few years. Like you join as a cadet. Say, cadet about one year. Then you add another... Three years to four years, okay. Three to four years to become chief officer, that is a boss, okay, senior officer. So it's just question of about five years plus exam time what you take. I'll say approximately six, five, six years, six years time. Six, I will put 
average of course supply demand also comes in but i will put around six years from the time you join c life you will be chief officer okay this is my expectation so in six years time you have to learn so much you have to experience so much you have to simulate in head that is why you end up doing all the jobs assisting assisting but at the same time you are learning and then as a chief officer maybe i will put about supply demand again but maybe another four years five years to become captain so how much we had calculated seven years plus say five years twelve years time you are expected to become captain okay around 12 to 15 years because supply demand situation controls the promotions anyway sir the maximum tenure of any position is the chief officer right in what in tenure of uh, staying I, I, at a position no generally it will be captain unless you are looking only in the middle only in the middle if you are looking from third officer to captain yes chief officer is generally the longest So realize one thing, today you all are 18, by the time you get out of the college you will be 21, by 27, 28 you will be chief officers and by 32 onward depending on supply demand situations you will become captains. So you have to experience a lot, so that is why you must have very positive attitude, you remember one thing, you are not cadets exactly. Always think of yourself as a captain in training. When you think yourself as a captain in training, you will think differently, you will react differently and you will keep on gathering experience. Otherwise, I had to do this, never mind, I will do it like this. It's not going to help you anyway. Okay. So, now any doubts or the new word for doubt, what is it?